Hi everybody, my name is Aaron Thomas, Marketing Director here at Start.ca and joined with me is Mr. Peter Rock, a CEO of Start.ca and this is Start Talk. Peter, how are you? Doing good yourself? Doing great, thank you. I got my Peter Rock a bobblehead right here, which we'll get to on another question that's coming up. And Start Talk is an opportunity for anybody out on social media to ask a question to a large telecom and to a CEO like Peter Rock over here. We'll answer those questions to the best of our ability. So let's dive right into it. We've got a lot of TV questions today, Pete. Sure we do. So I'm gonna combine a few of these questions that we have here. So we've got a question from Adam. When is TV coming out? He's been waiting a long time for information about it. Also have a question from Kelly. When will start.tv be available? So the URL, the website. And from Charlene, we have how much longer for TV I've been waiting. So some impatience, but patience at the same time. So when can we expect? Uh, great questions and thanks. I know that uh, TV has been on a lot of people's mind. Um, we've been really excited about this product and, and we're really close to launching. Uh, we certainly experienced a little bit longer uh, bringing it to market than we had hoped. Uh, there's a lot of learning. Uh, it's a very new industry and uh, for us. And uh, there's a lot of um, a lot of nuances, a lot of moving pieces that have to kind of mesh together in order to, to get the product launched. So we've been um, we've got most of our or we've got all of our architecture in place, and we're still working on kind of applying some of the polish, and making sure that the the finished product is what we would expect to be able to uh, to be a start product, and make mm -hmm. sure that it's up to our standards. And what about let's go back to the website, the start.tv website. Yes. Uh, so we're, we're continuing to make some updates to that. You know, people are going to notice probably over the next couple of weeks. Um, then we'll start getting some logo and a little bit of marketing material that's going to be added to it. The opportunity to register so that you uh, are kept up to date with any updates that are happening to that product. That's great. Um, so not so much a newsletter, but just kind of uh, some updates on where we are and just... Yeah. Uh, so someone wants to get information about it and they can go to the site, they can sign up and we'll send them out some information when there's new information available. Exactly, yeah. That's great. Um, Rushdie asked another great question over here. With TV, how many stations will you be offering and what is going to be the cost? Uh -huh. Big question. So our, our total lineup uh, kind of for initial launch is going to be about 150 uh, stations that are available, a little, few more than that I think. Um, but about 150 stations and what we're kind of targeting to do is we really want the entry level package to be something that is applicable for most people. It's going to it's going to have uh, all the sport or all the big sports. So you'll have your your sports nets and your TSNs. Uh, it's going to have your treehouse. It's going to have your food network, your home and garden, your AMC, uh, all the locals. And basically a lot of people are going to be able to just uh, use that basic package and then for people that want um, you know either more sports or more kids or more movies there's going to be uh, I think about six or seven theme packs that range in price anywhere from about five to ten bucks a uh, piece. Right so we're trying to find a, a package that kind of is, is one for all at a, at a decent price point that anybody can jump on to be very competitive in the market. Yeah, it's going to be really competitive. We're not ready to reveal the price and just uh, for you know competitor sensitivity, but the uh, it's it's highly competitive, and I, I figure about eighty percent of people are going to you know just be able to uh, be very happy with with what's in just the base uh, base plan. No, oh, and it's very exciting. Quite a bit of channels in the base plan, which is ex yes. very exciting too. And, right? and and some really high quality channels. Yeah, I'll get you there. Um, Jill writes in, or excuse me, Gil writes in and on Facebook and says it would be great if Start.ca would offer cable TV and mobile coverage. Is this on the horizon? Um, great question. So if if the mobile is talking about. Uh, being able to watch your TV on a mobile device, then some of the channels there's uh, we have rights distribution to be able to watch uh, on your mobile device, and some of those channels can be you know watched anywhere, and then a higher number of channels can be watched on a mobile device in your home if you're connected on Wi-Fi. Um, it really depends on the channels, and each channel has kind of its own set of rules on where you're able to uh, to watch that channel. It's uh, the t TV. Uh, Regulations haven't quite caught up with, you know, the Internet of Things, and yeah. uh, but you know we're seeing we're seeing change and progress. Uh, if the question is regarding um, like mobile, like uh, cell phone, cell phone coverage, yeah. 
then there's some really interesting things that are coming down the pipe. Uh, there's a CRTC uh, hearing um, or proceeding that is, is actually I think it's just a, a, a call for uh, uh, inter intervention or questions at this time mm. uh, regarding whether or not there should be opportunity for uh, opening up what's called an MVNO uh, type style for wholesale access to sell. So it's something that we're watching very closely and uh, are very interested in it and participating in those uh, in that process. So just to go back on this question, so why is it that we don't see a lot of independent providers offering cell phone coverage? Is that a regulatory? Um, well, there's really uh, there's, there's a very large barrier to entry and that is uh, obtaining spectrum. So spectrum is kind of the, the radio frequency that's in the air that you know cell phones use. Mm -hmm. And there's only a finite amount of, uh, of spectrum out there and a lot of it was um, was given or um, some of it was sold but a lot of it was given to the initial providers when they were opening up you know mobile network back 20 or 25 or however many years ago it was mm -hmm. and as certain uh, technologies transition so for example a lot of um, uh, over-the-air television some of that frequency is they're actually starting a process and I think the next couple of months talking about the 600 megahertz band and that's as they open up uh, old TV analog TV frequencies or over-the-air frequencies there's an opportunity to look at repurposing that spectrum so oh. um, spectrum is a very difficult thing to obtain uh, both from a, a capital and just the scarcity of, of it being available okay so in the future there might be an opportunity for ISPs to jump in on that when and if it becomes available yeah absolutely Interesting. Okay, so actually speaking on the CRTC, we do have a question here before we uh, end our, our show for today. So Christopher asked a question and I've kind of just taken a bit of the liberty here of changing the question a little bit. Um, what can we do to make this, Christopher asked, what can we do to make the CRTC belong to citizens? Um, and I'm sure you get this yeah. quite a bit of time. You know, people ask this question a lot. Yeah, well, the, the CRTC does have a mandate of actually foster. It, it, it is for citizens, so it represents Canadian interests. And I think over um, historically, let's, I want to step back more than than uh, three years ago. Sure. Um, and it kind of had a bit of a mandate, and it was really focused on large telecom provi uh, providers were really steering kind of the direction of the CRTC. Uh, mostly because there wasn't much of a, a competitive voice um, or a difference showing kind of a, a different optics on perhaps different know, perspective different exactly yeah. and over the over the last few years there's been a lot more consumer involvement and a lot more uh, competitor representation uh, and I think that uh, especially under under the previous chairman uh, uh, JP Blay who uh, recently um, finished his term at the CRTC, there was a lot of really pro-consumer decisions that came out and really did, I think, kind of represent a lot of, uh, a lot of Canadians. Um, certainly made a lot of progress with uh, connecting the North um, and, and certainly with wholesale and competitive access. We saw things like the wholesale code for cell phones that uh, restricted um, some of the term contracts and penalties that you know were kind of the norm before then. The three year to the two years now. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, we have a new chairman that uh, that just started, and so it's it's pretty new to see the direction. Uh, we're hoping and and, and uh, optimistic that they'll continue the good work that has been really making sure that the CRTC has been consumer focused over the last few years and hopefully you see that continue. Yeah, and I would suggest to uh, Christopher, if you're interested in the CRTC, go online, go to their website, send an email and see what actions or things that you can get involved with with the CRTC. Yeah. I'm sure there's plenty of things that you can get your voice heard. Yeah, they have a lot of open uh, consultations and if you go to the website, you can see all the open proceedings and they do uh, uh, take citizens' comments seriously. They're all reviewed during the hearings and proceedings, so it's a really good opportunity to make sure that your voice is heard. That's great. Well, this is edition number one today. We're talking about uh, TV, and I appreciate everybody taking their time to watch this episode. And you heard some really interesting things today, and we'll bring you some more information and some more questions and answers on the next edition of Star Talk. For Peter, I'm Aaron Thomas. Thank you very much. Thanks.